What's up neighborhood metalheads, my name is Devin and in this video we're going to be checking out the Heil PR35 dynamic microphone. Now in this video I'm basically just going to be giving my thoughts and opinion on the microphone and its performance. So let's check it out. Now when you buy the product straight out of the box you're greeted with a nice fake uh, leather black case uh, for the microphone itself which is quite nice, it's very small, very compact if you want to take it from place to place like a studio or a gig. Um, and inside is a very nice soft padding around the edges to stop it from getting uh, damaged or anything like that. And also you get foam casing. Uh, this isn't packaging, this is actually part of the case to stop your microphone from actually um, colliding with anything else that's in the case and getting scratched up or damaged as well. Alongside this you also get a nice little zip compartment for things like uh, notes, mic adapters, mic rings if you have more than one mic, and other microphone accessories that you might want to bring along with you. Now looking at the contents of the case itself, we can see the microphone is tucked in nice and tightly right there. It's a little bit difficult to take out, but it's, I would prefer it be that way than it be able to fall out really easy when you open up the case, to make sure it's nice and secure and doesn't break. On the bottom right of the microphone, we can see the uh, cradle, which is a very nice, a very nice design. It's very sturdy, uh, looks very heavy duty, and it doesn't look like it's going to break anytime soon. On the left there, we also have a pop filler that uh, basically sleeves on top of the microphone. Very easy to put on. You think you're going to tear it, but it's actually not that bad. It's it's very uh, very strong sort of material, and uh, does a great job when you're actually using the microphone itself. So now taking a look at the microphone itself, the design is very nice, it's a very sleek and stern design. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's something I'm going to drop anytime soon, so it's really comfortable to hold in the hand. Um, and even if I do drop it, it doesn't feel like it's something that's going to break very easy. Uh, I think it would take a lot for this microphone to get heavily damaged. Uh, apart from a few scratches here and there, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to take on much damage at all. An interesting thing about this microphone is that the port to give the mic its directional properties is a lot further back than most microphones. This is very beneficial in terms of uh, when a singer wants to cup the microphone or hold the microphone incorrectly, resulting in very flat and dead uh, sort of audio. Another interesting thing about this microphone is that the center of gravity is actually a lot further back than most traditional handheld microphones. This means if you try to hold it with the wrong mic technique, you're going to get tired of it pretty quickly, which means you cannot hold this microphone incorrectly and you have to hold it correctly, which is something Heil did try to push with their Cup This campaign. The mic grill is a very nice design as well with a flat head top so you can get it closer to the audio source that you're trying to record. So things like acoustic guitar, uh, electric guitar amps or vocals etc etc. If you look down the bottom of the microphone you can see the uh, bass roll off switch just under the screw there along with the PR35 logo. When putting on the pop filler for the microphone it's very easy. Like I said before it does feel like you're going to tear it at first but it's actually not that bad. It just simply sleeves on top of the microphone very very simply and very softly. Now when you look at the microphone inside the mic cradle it's actually a very nice fit. It does um, seem to sit in there quite nicely. The only downside I would say is that it has to be at a slight angle so that the microphone is sort of sitting in the mic cradle rather than just sort of laying inside of it. Um, at a vertical, sorry, a horizontal straight line. Um, the reason for this is because it tries to push the microphone out a little bit after a few seconds if there's too much handling or if the mic stand has been moved around too much. The only thing I can suggest to avoid this problem is to just simply not handle the microphone stand as much uh, or the microphone itself. Obviously if you're holding it and you're at a live gig this probably isn't going to be much of a big deal. Now in terms of performance this microphone does really well with recording voiceover and if you're a broadcaster this would also be a perfect choice for you because it needs very little processing whatsoever. The only thing I've got going on at the moment is a bit of compression and a noise gate to take off some of the sound coming from the fans of my computer. Another thing about this microphone is you don't actually have to be very close to it to pick up a very good sound. Obviously if you want to get a more isolated sound uh, and you know you're in a room like I am where there's a bit of an echo, you can just simply just get closer to the microphone and get a little bit more intimate. In terms of how it sounds without any processing, this is exactly how it sounds. Uh, without any effects, without any compression, without any EQ, etc, etc. Uh, it, even without processing, this is a very impressive microphone uh, in comparison to other microphones, for example, the SM57, uh, SM58, and one of my own microphones is the Audio-Technica AT2050. I'll do a comparison of that one in a moment. But in terms of no processing sound whatsoever, the only thing I think is a little bit harsh is the plosives, even with 
the pop shield on the microphone, but that can be really easily revealed, um, avoided by putting a, a, a microphone stand pop shield in front of it. So in terms of comparisons between this microphone and the Audio Technica microphone, I would do a comparison between this and the Shure SM57 and SM58, but I actually don't have those microphones because I'm personally not a big fan of them, um, so I've never really needed to purchase one before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a recording audio test between this microphone and the um, Audio Technica. So I will switch to the Audio Technica now. Okay, so we've now switched over to the Audio Technica AT2050 microphone. Now, this microphone is very different to the PR35 in terms of frequency um, and also in terms of range. This microphone does pick up a lot more noise, uh, room noise uh, in the background because of its sensitivity in comparison. This microphone also is very, um, very different in dealing with plosives. Like I said on the other one, the PR35 isn't great for it either, but at the same time, this microphone is definitely worse when you're talking directly into it. Right now, I'm talking slightly offside from it, so you can't, actually can't hear the plosives, but if you talk directly into the microphone and do a plosives test, Peter Petalong's Pinkle P, P word, B word, P word pops. You can hear the plosives are a little bit more harsher and a little bit harder to get rid of, Talking directly into the microphone makes it even worse. So you definitely need a pop shield with this. I'll show you now. So this is me talking directly into the microphone without any uh, pop shield. And you can see that the pop shield, the pop field, the plosives are very harsh and very difficult to avoid. Um, I'm gonna actually move that back because I don't want to damage my microphone by blowing it out or anything like that. Um, but in terms of frequencies, it's actually not much different. Um, the high, the high old PR35 deals with midsection a lot better, I feel. Um, in terms of highs, it's not much different. In terms of bass, it's not much different. Um, I actually have this microphone going into the same channel uh, as the PR35 before I, I switched them over, and the settings are the exact same in terms of frequency, gain, and sensitivity. Another big difference between this microphone and the Hyo PR35 is the handling. Now, obviously, with the condenser microphone, you wouldn't use this microphone live on stage. But in terms of compared to the SM57 or SM58, the Hyo PR35 deals with handling noise so much better than the other two microphones. The reason for this is because the Hyo PR35 actually has rubber padding on the inside of the structure of the microphone that absorbs a lot of the handling noise. This makes it so much easier for if you're live on stage and you don't want to, uh, sorry, and you want to avoid all that handling noise, so all the scuffling and sort of uh, rush, rushling noise of, of, of your hand holding the microphone, um, uh, etc, etc. Another big difference between the two microphones of the condenser microphone and a dynamic microphone uh, is that if you want to use your dynamic microphone for voiceovers um, while using a mouse and keyboard on a desk, I would definitely recommend trying to find a shock mount for a dynamic microphone because this uh, the PR35 picks up on desk noise so much, very sensitive to it. And the Audio Technica, on the other hand, doesn't pick up on that. And I think that's mainly because it doesn't need um, to go into a cradle. Its cradle is actually a shock mount. Okay, so we're now in Logic Pro, and I'm going to show you uh, what each microphone sounds like with a bit of processing on each one. Uh, the only difference between each microphone is they are going to have slightly different settings. Um, to my personal preference in terms of what's been set on the desk. Um, the Audio Technica microphone had no setting uh, adjusted whatsoever. Uh, the uh, PR35 has a slight gain um, in the highs and bo uh, boosted in the bass section. Um, and this is mainly for a podcast uh, sort of setting uh, for microphones. So let's take a listen to the Audio Technica AT2050 without processing. What's up neighborhood metalheads, it's Devin here and this is an audio recording test for the Audio Technica AT2050. And now let's take a listen to the Audio Technica with processing. What's up neighborhood metalheads, it's Devin here and this is an audio recording test for the Audio Technica AT2050. So you can see how both uh, channels sound e extremely different. The uh, processed version sounds much better, much clearer. Um, uh, a lot of the bass has been, you know, brought out more, and the color has been uh, brought out a hell of a lot more uh, because of the EQ. The compression puts, pulls it all together, and the limiter just keeps all those um, syllables and uh, sorry, sibilances and plosives down, uh, and keeps it equal with the rest of the 
the audio. So the same goes for the uh, high LPR35, which is that one down there. So let's take a listen to it without the processing and then with. This is the high LPR35. This is an audio recording test for the high PR35. Okay, so that's without, and you can see it sounds very, very plain, very simple. Uh, this is with some processing. This is an audio recording test for the high PR35. So you can see it's a much, uh, you know, again, a big difference, and it sounds very professional, very sort of podcast sort of style. A brilliant sound for, again, um, podcasts, broadcasts, uh, radio, etc., etc. And uh, what you're hearing right now is actually the same as that channel uh, just there because I'm actually using that preset and I have saved it as uh, one of my favorite presets. Okay, so that's it for um, the comparisons of the uh, non-processed to processed. Um, I think it's best that we move on to uh, instrument recordings. So first up, we're going to check out a few things with guitars and then a few things with vocals. What's up guys, I just want to say thanks for watching part 1 of this review, if you want to check out part 2 it will be out very soon, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks a lot and I'll see you guys later. See ya!